This time, I'm going to give you a quick introduction about hash maps and how they work. And I'm going to explain this with reference to arrays. Let's get started. And if you don't know what arrays are, what are you doing, guys? You can't learn how to fly without knowing how to breathe first. So go learn arrays, pause this video, then come back. And I'll explain hash maps and how they work. Let's imagine this is our array right here, this blank book. Uh, pages are all blank. There's nothing much in it. Let's assume our problem statement was something like this. You see these five numbers here? 10, 5, 7, 9, 9. Our goal is to find the frequency of each of these numbers. So our final output should be something like 10 occurs one time, 5 occurs one time, 7 occurs one time, 9 occurs twice. That's our goal. First, let me show you how to solve it using arrays. So we open our book. The first page is blank. So we're going to put 10 and 1 inside. Another problem with arrays is that often you're going to need two arrays, one to store the number itself and one to store its frequency. This is another problem with arrays. So now we put 10 and its current frequency, 1 right here. Now we look at the next element, 5. Already we're starting to see the drawback of arrays in that we've got to go to the first page, check if 5 is there, and then move on to the next page. But we'll see it a little more clear as we move on. So here we can see 5 occurs one time. Our next element is 7. Got to go to the beginning, 10, then 5. Neither of these is 7. So we add 7 to the end. 7 occurs one time. You can see it here, 7 occurs one time. Next, we go to 9. Same process, 10, 5, 7, none of them is 9. So we go to a new page and add 9 here. 9 occurs one time, as we see here pretty clearly. Now, when we see the second 9, we can start seeing the disadvantage of our race. We've got to go to the beginning and check every element and see if that is equal to 9. So 10 is not equal to 9, 5 is not equal to 9, 7 is not equal to 9. And after reaching the end of our array, we finally see that 9 is here, so we can increase its count to 2. You see here, its count 1 has been cancelled out and has become 2. We know 9 is the last element. We are yelling at the computer, boss, it's the fourth element, just go there, just do it. But the computer has its own process, its own thinking and all, so it goes to the beginning. Element 1, element 2, element 3, oh, the fourth element is 9. Once it hits it, only then it updates. Hash maps do it much quicker, much faster in a single iteration in a time complexity of big O of 1. Let's show, let me show you how. So first thing hash maps are going to do is they're going to have a function. This function helps convert the number into a code. Here, let's just call a code a color. Since I've got a couple of colored bookmarks right here, as you can see, we're going to use colors. So the first number it sees is 200. So when it passes through the hashing function, we're going to assume the colored returns is yellow. So what we're going to do is take this yellow bookmark right here, place the yellow bookmark on a certain page, and write its frequency. That's one. See, we don't have to write 200 like we had to in the previous array. That's because this yellow directly denotes 200. So there's no need to write it. Now, the next number, 5. Going to denote 5 with green. Going to stick the little green color portion right here and write its frequency one. Next, seven. What do we do? Take pink, assign it to seven, and set its frequency to one. Finally, nine. Nine is going to be orange. As you can see, we've set an orange bookmark with a counter of one. Now we close the book and we look at the next nine. Now, as soon as we pass it through our function, we know that 9 is an orange color. So all we do is check our book for the orange bookmark that's right here. Open up that page. This right here denotes 9. And we change this one to 2. So can you see? We didn't have to go to the beginning of the book like in arrays. Check every single element. No, it's not 10. No, it's not 5 or 7. So finally, the last element is 9. So now we update 9's counter. Instead, we did it in one shot in a single iteration, in big O of one time complexity. So guys, that's why hash maps are so, so powerful. You have to know these structures because they're considered sort of uh, advanced data structures, but they can be used to solve certain questions, certain interview problems in far less com time complexity than they would have normally taken. So that's been Vivek. If you like this little hash map explainer video, just leave a little comment down below, like, subscribe, bell. And if you want more of these, 
to explain more advanced data structures or any concepts, again, let us know down below. I'll see you guys next time.